Hello friends. Here we are in Williams, Oregon on the second day of September in 2017. We're at Strictly Medicinal Seeds Farm up here on 3350 Cedar Flat Road in Williams, Oregon. Today I'm looking at Stackey's Byzantina, which is known as Woolly Lamb's Ears, and I'm examining it in the context of possible um, application to antimicrobial research vis-a-vis -vis the relationship between its allelopathic activity and potential activity against different kinds of pathogenic organisms. Uh, hopefully Staphylococcus being somewhere near the top of the list. So the plant is uh, one of the what I know what I call the wound warts. It is um, in the uh, Stachys genus which is represented by about 300 different species and they are uh, in the family Lamiaceae that is the mint family the uh, specific plant, woolly lamb's ears, has not been investigated uh, often or consistently in terms of its bioactivity, uh, but several surveys do show that it contains uh, quite a few uh, essential oils, mainly, of course, in the aerial parts, and uh, our investigation is going to be more in the roots of the plant, which are biochemically less complex and maybe easier to parse out in terms of um, potential active compounds. The uh, etymology of the, uh, of the word Stachys byzantina is um, Stachys, that is uh, having a uh, ear-like or corn-like inflorescence that is uh, um, uh, a, uh, race, a terminal raceme, which you see now in the seed stage uh, here at this time of year. And then also um, Byzantine is just uh, uh, something akin to the Byzantine Empire, which was, of course, Istanbul. Then I wanted to show you how the uh, plant is demonstrating this allelopathic activity by looking at some of the um, surrounding grasses and uh, uh, thistles. These are milk thistles that have gone to seed and have been collected as seed. And then here is the patch of woolly lamb's ears, and you can see how it's spread over the years from being a single row to being a, a large patch. The plant is uh, what we call rhizomatous, that is, it spreads by way of underground stems or stolons. And here you can see that it's made what we call a, a monotypic patch. That is, really, it's, it's only the woolly lamb's ears. And I've watched this patch naturalize and grow over the last decade or so and uh, create this monotypic stand. You know, you think about uh, taggedy species and the fact that they excrete compounds into the soil which kill a root, not nematodes, those are known as thiophenes. And you think about uh, black walnut and the, the uh, juglone, which is a, a strong antiparasitic, and the fact that other plants don't grow uh, well underneath black walnut trees. They, they uh, are allelopathic. They, limit the um, 
progression of other plants and the germination of other seeds within their drip line. And then we get to woolly lamb's ears, the Stachys byzantina, and we think, hmm. This one too is allelopathic. I wonder what kinds of compounds might be excreted and whether they might have other effects. So that's really the focus of this study. And I just wanted to orient you as to um, where the sample is coming from. It's coming from this patch. And I know you scientists, you always are asking for more, so I dug as much as I could bring myself to dig in this dry, dry soil that we have out here. Haven't seen any rain for quite a while. And this is the spot where I where I dug. And it was clearly, you know, monotypic. When I dug it, it wasn't like there was anything else in there. No, it won't be difficult to garble it and make it be a clean sample for you. There were no grass roots in there. I mean, you can see a few other species growing in there here and there, but uh, for the most part, it was only the herb under question. So yes, there, there's my empty bucket because I'm going to collect some seeds later on after I work with your sample. And then here is the sample itself, the shovel that was used. You can see that we have um, a kind of a mat of roots and stolons. It's going to be a bit difficult to differentiate where the stolen stops and the stem begins. We'll uh, definitely be cutting off the stems and individuating the roots and washing them and then putting them on the rack to dry. I did note in the literature that there's quite a bit of difference between the working with fresh plant material aerials and dried plant materials that the uh, triterpenoic compounds are pretty volatile in this species and may go away with drying but hopefully whatever it is that you find in the roots won't be volatile and so we'll work with a dry root sample. Well that's about it. I don't mean to bore you with all this. I just wanted to tell you what it is that I know and why I'm why I'm thinking in this direction and um, I'll leave it up to you to parse it out and see what kind of compounds are involved and see if there's anything there that is going to save humanity. Bye now.